All right, good morning, everybody. Welcome to Sunday morning worship at the coffee shop. And a happy Mother's Day to all the moms out there. We're going to begin with a word of prayer and then uh, singing some, some, some songs. But why don't you stand with me as we pray. Heavenly Father, we're thankful for your grace and your mercy, which allow us to come before you in worship. Lord, we thank you uh, for your love, which you show to us by sending your son to earth. Uh, to live and die and rise again, Lord, so that we could be with you once again. We thank you uh, for this place, this opportunity to gather one another, to gather with one another and, and worship you and fellowship. Lord, we pray that this service and this time would would just turn our our, our thoughts and our, and our hearts towards you, and and that you would receive glory and honor and praise. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. amen. We're going to start with God is so good. to have. We're trying to find chairs. It's awesome. It's Mother's Day. Happy Mother's Day. Uh, this is that day. You, got, you can be seated. I'm going to be long-winded. It's Mom's Day. <laughs> um, it's that day where uh, they say the most phone calls are made. Uh, I also, as a pastor, find that other than Easter, it's like one of the busiest days on church, which is really fun. Good to have you guys here this morning. Um, so in honor of Mother's Day, you know, Mother's Day, we know, uh, now that I'm a pastor, I've learned, because I've journeyed with people, 
Mother's Day can be extremely celebratory and really awesome for some because we've got brand new mothers and it's their first Mother's Day. Where's Eunice over here playing the bass? It's her first Mother's Day. And it's really exciting because some people have been mothers for a really long time. I won't Ellen's point. Oh, it's Day. Ellen's first Mother's Day too. Where'd I see Ellen? Over there, first Mother's Day. Woohoo! And then there's others that have been mothers for a really long time. I won't point any fingers over this direction. Um, <laughs> and, uh, but we also know that Mother's Day can be really difficult for some. For some, maybe they lost their mother this year in the past year. Uh, maybe um, they haven't been able to have children or, or they've wanted to get married and haven't been able to. And so we also celebrate you two as women and we love you. But this morning, if you are a mother, would you please stand up and Evie, can you help me out? Where'd Isla go? And uh, Isla's over there. How about you, um, Athea and um, Gideon? You want to help me too? Can you guys come over here? You guys want to help? How about Cheska? And what's your friend's name? Mia. Yeah. Mia. Mia, you want to help out too? Come over here. Here you go. You can show them. If you're a mom, please stand up. And kiddos, grab these daffodils. These are from Grammy Mary's house. These are called Bill's Dills. And um, can you guys each grab a couple of these and go around and see which ladies are standing up and wish them Happy Mother's Day. And I think we have enough that some of them can even get two is fine. So grab a couple. Grab a bunch. Grab a bunch. Go this way too. They went right to their mom. That's great. If you go over there, anyone that's standing up. And you can give it to anyone that's standing up. Oh, this is one. She's got a fancy hat on right there and pink pants. I think she's been a mother. How long have you been a mother for? She's good. Does someone have a calculator? It's been enough years. She gets 10 flowers. Yes, you do. If you are a mother, please stand up and we will give you a flower. Or even if you're a mother. Hey, Isla. Isla, there's a lady right, oh, yeah, actually, right here. Here you go, bro. Here you go, here's a couple. There you go. Hey, thanks, man. You can hand them out to anyone you see. There you go. And I'm really fortunate today because my mother's here. And so I'm going to give my mother that today. You guys can go again. Awesome. And I'm, I'm super thankful for moms. I think moms demonstrate attributes about God um, that are so amazing to me. His sacrificial love, the way he comforts us. Moms, thank you for doing those things and, and reminding me of the Lord. So we're going to sing Simple Gospel. Uh, I invite you to stand. Yeah. 
him how I prove him o'er and o'er. Jesus, Jesus, precious Jesus, oh, for grace to trust him more. Today we gather to worship Jesus. Lord, we thank you. We thank you for your goodness. We thank you for the countless hours of women, of mothers in this room, whether it's feeding, caring for children, um, caring for their husbands. Often, uh, Lord, there's just so much um, amazing, redemptive work uh, for your kingdom through the mothers in this room. So today, we honor them. But Lord, uh, it's it's you, it's your love that's that's uh, expressed through the way that they mother. So uh, we ultimately worship you, Lord. But thank you for the mothers here. We pray all this in your Son Jesus' name. Amen. You guys may be seated. I'm going to go ahead and invite uh, Sharon on up. Mother's Day every year signifies um, the beginning of the uh, baby bottle fundraiser. So she's going to share a little bit about that. Do you want me to hold it for you? You got it? Okay. Okay. Am I in the right spot? You're good. I got, I got you over here. <laughs> oh, yes. awesome. Uh, but like Nathan said, every Mother's Day starts the Baby Bottle Blessing, which is a fundraiser for Haven Pregnancy Services. Now, I know a lot of you are aware of what Haven Pregnancy Center or Services does. But first and foremost, they, you know, they do not perform or refer people for abortions. It's Christ-centered, and they reflect God's love through the sanctity of life. So every woman that comes through for their services um, is, if you read some of the testimonials, it is just the, they're feeling the love from the people that work there and the volunteers. And eventually many of those conversations lead to relating to these women who Christ is. And oftentimes their partners obviously are with them. So I just want to share some of the services that they offer. And I had to write them down because they've got to be so many. So obviously pregnancy testing, options consolation, limited OB ultrasound, abortion education, adoption information, parenting education classes, material support, after abortion care. If a woman comes in uh, that has had an abortion, she can be struggling for years. I know that on a personal level, and they offer such amazing counseling services. And again, just showing these women the love of Christ. And they offer that for their partner also, because the men often experience the grief and depression that comes from an abortion. So, and then they also offer many referrals for medical, social services, and community aid. On the material support, many of you will remember that we helped a young woman with five children over Christmas, whose husband had committed suicide the previous year, and so that was a reference through Haven, because this woman has been connected with Haven just for support for many years. So the Baby Bottle Blessing is just a great opportunity to, again, help them out, because obviously they are a nonprofit. So you just take one of these baby bottles, fill it with change, dollar bills, big dollar bills, and checks. <laughs> and large checks. Anyways, and there is a paper in there if you want a receipt for a tax deduction, or if you want more information, or if you would like to volunteer, that would be fantastic. And parents with small children, older children, it's a good conversation starter. Like, why are we doing this? What's the reason for this? What does God tell us about this? So. This starts today, traditionally, that's how it has been for years, and it ends on Father's Day. I know Father's Day is our first mountaintop service, but Heidi has always been gracious to let the bottles be dropped off here, and this year, I think I'm gonna leave the bottles here 
gotcha be picked up so that anybody online you can just come here any day during the week grab a bottle and try and get it back to us by father's day so awesome thanks thank you and here is encore thrift shop for anyone online who doesn't know sharon where can they find if they want to pick up a bottle today where do they get it right here right in the basket which it looks like it's just going to follow sharon around oh, i'll put it somewhere she'll put it somewhere <laughs> look for the basket with the baby bottles in it uh i'm going to go ahead and direct your attention to the back of your bulletin so we'll just run through some announcements uh this next weekend friday and saturday is the if gathering really cool we have a lot of ladies that are signed up for that um if you haven't gotten signed up uh make sure to check out the table right over there there's a uh, where the um, offering uh, box is, there's a sign up there, and uh, please um, do that by today. So let Heidi know by today that you want to join in. Along with that, there's a, a small packing list uh, because you will be staying at the farmhouse over in Woodstock. So uh, this Wednesday night, uh, there's a tagging party here at Encore. What? Oh, sorry. Wednesday, Wednesday morning from 10 to 11 p.m. or 10 to 12 p.m. at Encore. Um, come check that out. Tag some clothes. A uh, good way to get ahead. Um, coming up on the 30th, Memorial Day weekend, we have our first Waterville service uh, at the church chair. It snows, or not the church chair, it snows mountain chair um, down in Waterville. If you want to be a part of that, really cool services, um, talk to Marcus. Um, but very excited. Uh, as Sharon mentioned, the uh, services on the mountain start on Father's Day, which is June 20th. And we will be uh, transitioning to doing just the mountain services for the summer. Um, 811 Youth is on this week at uh, Eunice Nye's house. You'll see a couple other opportunities to get involved throughout the week with different Bible studies. So we've got a bi-monthly teen group for 13 to 18 year olds. That's actually happening tomorrow night down at the Dole Mill from 6 to, or 6.30 to 8. Women's Coffee Hour still happens here on Monday mornings. Check that out from 10 to 11. Dessert First Bible Study on Tuesday nights at 7 p.m. And, uh, and then this is one of the off weeks for Bill and, and Scott's Bible Study, but they will be meeting next week from 6 to 7. So lots of cool ways to get involved in our community. Um, we're just so grateful that you guys are here. And, and, and let's take today to really honor and cherish the mothers that are in this room. Uh, the mothers that uh, couldn't be here, the mothers who were online. If if you at home didn't get a, a, a flower, then tell one of your kids to go get a flower out in the yard and give it to you. So uh, we're so grateful that you guys are here. Of course, you Grammy can... Grammy Mary says they can go to the, her house too. Get some. Grammy Mary, yeah. What are they? They're Bill Stills. Bill Stills. These, that's what these flowers are. So make sure to do that. Um, you can support us, obviously, with the support box there or give online at lunamtnministry.com. But... We're thankful you guys are here, and I believe we're going to release the kiddos. Uh, Trish is going to be uh, taking kids for Sunday school with the help of Ruth Ellen. So if you're from the ages of 2 through 7, uh, please follow them over this way. I'll invite the rest of us to stand and sing Yahweh. Jesus 
All right, you may be seated. Uh, Jim Jameson, I have asked Jim to come read scripture for us. Maybe you guys would help me kind of make some room for me and Jim. I've asked Jim to come and read scripture. One, because I really like it when Jim reads scripture. But also, I figured all of you mothers would really like listening to Jim read scripture. Jim has an ability to tell me and show me how important things are. Reading scripture, I'm sure, he, you know, importance of motherhood. And so I'd ask Jim to come and read the scripture. You're doing good, Jim. Thank you. Let me hold this for you. Can I hold that or this? Yep. Just don't go far from me. I won't go too far. Down. You want to hold my shoulder? <laughs> yeah. Okay. Reading the scripture, May 9th, 2021. The day there was a wedding and celebration in the village of Cana in Galilee. Jesus' mother was there. The wine supply ran out during the festivities, so Jesus' mother told them, They have no more wine. Dear woman, that's not our problem, Jesus replied. My time has not yet come. But his mother told the servants, Do whatever he tells you. This is a reading from John 2, chapter 1. Verses 1 through and 3 and 5. This concludes the reading of Scripture on May 9th. Thank you. Thank you, Jim. I really like it when Jim reads Scripture. Thanks, Michelle. <laughs> we had uh, Jim come join us over here because... We had so many people in our worship band this morning that we don't have channels for our wireless mic. So that's a good problem to have, huh? It's great. Well, happy Mother's Day. Uh, I have a confession to make. Um, as a minister, and I've been doing this now, I guess, for three years, uh, Mother's Day is one that I, 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 I'm a little bit nervous about. I don't normally get nervous speaking in public. I'm glad I don't because I do it three, four, five times a week, it seems like. Um, but Mother's Day is one of those ones where I'm like, ooh, I, what do I speak on? What do I share on from God's Word? One, I don't want to sit up here and offer a lot of advice because I'm not a mother, right? I, I also don't want to build up some biblical character that mothers are like, oh man, I can't live up to that. You know, and then I, I called my dear old mom, which was great to come see me today. I said, what would you like to hear on Mother's Day? She said, I would like to hear a good biblically-based sermon. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Sounds good, mom. Um, but uh, I got to thinking about the mothers um, in Scripture. And obviously in Scripture, the most famous mother. Who's the most famous mother in Scripture? Mary, Mother Mary, you're exactly right. <laughs> and um, and Mother Mary is uh, an interesting study, you know, because currently, you know, Mother Mary has a few different, uh, you know, ways that we as a culture can look at Mother Mary, right? Um, we have a couple different images of Mary. Obviously, our Catholic brothers and sisters, Mary is a big deal. Um, Mary is a really big deal. And what's so frustrating for me as a Protestant minister, the, the, the Protestant sometimes, which is the other sibling, right, has been so frustrated at the, the, the Catholic brothers and sisters making so much of Mary, I feel sometimes we as Protestants have made too little of Mary. So I went to study about Mary. And one thing I want you mothers to understand about Mary as I've studied her is she experienced everything. As a mother, I mean, she experienced everything. So we're going to kind of walk through the things um, that Mary experienced. We obviously know that she experienced miracles, right? And and we kind of often just think about the really cool things that happened to Mary. And obviously, a miracle was one. This miracle is is really really obviously important because Messiah came to Earth. But also, you have to understand culturally a couple things culturally. One, in the time of Mary, God had not spoken to his people through his prophets for 400 years. His people had not heard from him 
for 400 years. I don't know about you, but sometimes as, a, as an American Christian, I feel like God can be really silent. Right? I hear about God speaking in third world countries, or I hear sometimes God speaking to people in dreams or whatever. And I'll be honest with you, sometimes as a Protestant minister in New England, I'm like, uh, hello? I, I, I'd like some confirmation. I'd like to hear. Well, Mary found herself in the same exact culture. A culture that had not heard God's audible voice in 400 years. Where had God gone? He breaks the silence not to Mary. He breaks the silence to one of Mary's family members six months prior, Zacharias in the temple. When he was told the old man that you're going to have a son named John the Baptist. And the old man said, I'm not going to know I'm old. And the angel said, because of your doubt, you ain't going to be able to talk until he's born. And the wife, Elizabeth, said, Amen. <laughs> Elizabeth was Mary's cousin. And she was pregnant six months earlier than Mary from a divine intervention, from, a, from an angel. Now, it was with her husband, but it was divine intervention because they were so old. And so... Elizabeth was pregnant. And then Gabriel shows up to Mary and says, Behold, you have found favor with God. You are highly favored with God. And that's something we as Protestants have to remember. Mary found absolute, unbelievable favor with the Heavenly Father, the God of the universe, came down and spoke to this 13-year-old. Yes, culturally, Mary was 13 years old-ish, maybe even 12, somewhere between 12 and 14. Mary was spoken to by Gabriel. Right? Because in the Jewish tradition at that time, Mary, uh, Jewish, Jewish gals would have been given off to be married in that 13 to 14 year old when they came of age. And it says in the Bible that Mary was betrothed to, to Joseph. Engaged. Engaged. So Mary experienced miracles. An angel showed up. Now, one of the things that I didn't think about until I started studying Mary is that imagine an angel showed up to you and said, um, you have found favor with God, and the Holy Spirit will come upon you, and you will conceive the Messiah, the Son of God, and you will give birth, and you will call his name Emmanuel. You'll call his name Jesus. Now, if that happened to us, obviously that is insane. Because we're not waiting for a Messiah. That culture knew and was very thinking about this Messiah. This baby boy that would bring the Jewish people back to freedom and out from underneath the oppression of the Roman rule. So what I didn't think about is it was one of those aspirations that a young woman would have in that time. Would I be the one? Could I be the mom? Now... Think about this. They did not know that it was going to be immaculately conceived by the Holy Spirit. They thought it was going to be a line of a king. And that this boy would take over the, Jew the Roman government and set free the, the Jewish people again. And each mom was like, maybe it's my boy. Maybe it's my boy. So when Gabriel came and told Mary that she was going to give so a birth to the Messiah... That was not a foreign concept. And you know what? That kind of news to the wrong person could have gone right to her head. And she could have broadcasted it on social media. <laughs> I'm going to be the mom of the Messiah! But God knew what he was doing. He picked somebody humble. How do we know that Mary was humble? Her response. Her response was, I am am the Lord's maid servant. The Jewish culture was a patriarchal culture where men had ownership of all things. And the females did not have ownership. And not only did you not have ownership, but if you were a maid servant, you were owned and owned twice over. And what Mary responded verbally was, I will be completely owned by you, God I am 100% at your beck and call. I have no rights. And maybe you would say, well, I would say the same thing if Gabriel showed up. Would you? I don't really think Mary understood what she was signing up for. I don't think she did. One, she was engaged. And in that community and in that culture, when she was engaged and she was pregnant, 
and it was not Joseph's baby, her fiancé, in that culture, he had legal right to have her stoned to death. Let me say that again so that you it sinks in. In that culture, if the fiancé, who was a male, went and said, this is not my baby, and she is not pregnant by me, and she's pregnant out of wedlock and adultery, that is punishable by stoning to death. So Joseph had to be humble too. He had to receive this information, right? I don't know if anyone's engaged in here, but I was engaged once. And if your fiance came to you and be like, oh, the Holy Spirit came to me and I'm pregnant with God's baby, I promise. Imagine being engaged and your fiance saying that to you like, okay, uh, one, I'm upset at you for adultery, but you're also a cuckoo, so I'm leaving. This engagement is broken off. You're a wacko, right? But Joseph also had an angelic appearing to him. So he was tipped off by the Holy One and what was going on. But he too could have been like, I don't know. It must have been what I ate last night. I knew that lamb was a little bit off. I knew mom had it outside the fridge too long. Woo! I'm wacko. You're wacko. I'm out. You know, but he did it. He humbly submitted. And boy, Joseph, I think sometimes even had a harder role than Mary. Anyone know what happened to Joseph? Nope. Anyone know what Joseph did? Nope. Joseph is like the low of the low characters in the Bible. We don't know. We just don't know. I'm excited to get to heaven and be like, hey, seen Joseph? I'm sure most people will be like, who? You know, Joseph? Uh, yeah, I think I saw him over there in the stable somewhere hanging out with the donkey. He still hasn't left the manger scene yet. Over there. It's the only place I find him in scripture is the manger scene. That's me. Anyway. So he was humble, but Mary was humble, but I don't think she knew what she was signing up for. So women, mothers, hear this. Mary did see a miracle. If you're a mother, you've seen a miracle. You can't give birth to a child and tell me that's not a miracle, right? Miracle. So she experienced miracles. You experienced miracles. Mary ex uh, experienced extreme scrutiny and shame and fear, so much so that she fled her town and went to be with her cousin Elizabeth. Have you experienced shame as a mother? Or scrutiny of your parenting or your mother? Or, 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 or you know, you got pregnant too early as a mother? Or you got pregnant too late? Or, you know, there's just all of these things that you can be stacked up and measured up against other people, right? And social media makes that even bigger. So she did too. She was going to be scrutinized so much that she couldn't even stay in her hometown. She had to bounce and go hang out with Elizabeth. Why do you think she hung out with Elizabeth? Because Elizabeth was super old and pregnant, which was socially weird. And Mary wasn't married and pregnant, which was a social no-no. So she's like, ooh, my cousin Elizabeth. And they were both miracles, right? Birth is miracle, but when you're Elizabeth's age, that's a real miracle. And when you're, you know, and when you're... Um, when you're uh, Mary's age, that's a miracle as well. Um, and so she went to hang out with Elizabeth. She went to hang out with Elizabeth. And if you think it couldn't get any worse, the government oppressed her and said, you can't stay in your hometown for your birth. You can't be in your home hospital. You can't be in your home bed. You can't be in your hometown with your family. You need to go to, you know, because... Uh, in that day, they were doing a census where all the world was going to be taxed. She had to go to the hometown of Bethlehem. And if it was worse, they couldn't find a place to stay in Bethlehem. You think it's rugged, right? I know some folks that are eight months pregnant, and it doesn't look that much fun. It looks like, man, if I'm going to start charging this kid rent. It doesn't look comfortable. I know like when Heidi was eight, nine months pregnant, it didn't look comfortable, right? I've only experienced that on Thanksgiving at about three o'clock right but that goes for a whole two months for them you think that's bad now ride a donkey a donkey yes the Bartlett's have a donkey you're gonna share that Eunice um the Bartlett's have a donkey and um they have you ever read one of the wrote, did you ride that when you were pregnant you should have tried to feel like what Mary really oh it's a mini donkey it's not a donkey it's a mule I'm getting some lessons right now 
There was a donkey. Okay. But anyway, that would have been interesting, right? But I'm sure, I've never been eight months pregnant. But if you can think back, Eunice, to when you were eight months pregnant, do you think riding that mini would have been any fun, Eunice? No. No, because she'd probably kick you before you... Oh, the donkey would kick you, so. <laughs> anyway, Mary experienced discomfort. She was completely taken out of her norm, out of her comfort zone. Moms, do you experience discomfort? Taken out of your norm, out of your comfort zone? 100%, right? Yes? Kate's over there. She's like, yes. Was it, you're, this, you're taken out. Mary understood that. Then Mary did experience the miracle where the shepherds came and, and confirmed to her that she was doing what was right. Right? And mothers, there is times. And today, that's what we want to be. We want to be shepherds to you. We want to confirm to you that motherhood is a beautiful and divine calling. And sometimes in today's culture, mothers can kind of get put down for their calling. And that's not okay. Because motherhood is the most incredible calling there is. And it should be championed. And it should be celebrated. And it should be popular. And it should be awesome. Because there isn't one of us sitting here that I know it might not have been the best mother. might have been an awesome mother. But there's not one of us sitting here that didn't have a mother. So you know what, culture? You can put down motherhood all you want. But you, there is no culture without motherhood. Any culture. So thank you, mothers. Now, Mary experienced that. And in that moment, there was a, just a beautiful moment. And the Bible says this. I love this phrase. Luke chapter 2. There's Mary. She couldn't find any room in Bethlehem. She's given birth in a barn behind a pub. Right? And the shepherds come. And says, Mary pondered all these things in her heart. Or another translation, Mary treasured all these things or stored up all these things. And again, just like when Gabriel came to Mary, Mary didn't know what she was signing up for. When she gave birth to the Messiah in that stable in Bethlehem and she pondered all those things in her heart, she, would, she did also did not know what she was signing up for. For her world was about to flip over. I bet in her mind she thought, okay, we'll go do this census thing, we'll do this tax thing, and we'll head back to Nazareth, where it's comfortable, it's normal, I have family, I have friends, my normal routine, we'll go there. But did that happen? No. Why? Because King Herod came. And they fled to Egypt. Mary knows what it's like to be a refugee. She knows what it's like to be homeless. Folks, I'm going to say something right now. Mothers, I'm speaking to you and I want to challenge you. Safety has become your God. And in the name of safety of your child, you have made decisions that don't really necessarily make sense. Think about Mary. Was it safe to flee to Egypt? Now, I know they were trying to stay away from King Herod, but they could have gone home. But they were told to go to Egypt. She was homeless. We as parents have this inner thing like, I must provide for my child. I must provide. They must have a really puffy pillow. And they must have a mint on it. And they must have their back rubbed every night. And the same song read to them and everything. That's great. But do you think Mary could do that? In the midst of homelessness and, 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 and being a refugee? Her norm was upside down. I'm sure she doubted. I'm sure as they were going to Egypt, fleeing in the night, and got to Egypt and had nowhere to stay, she looked up at heaven and said, Uh, am I missing something? You're the king of kings and the lord of lords. My Bible says that you own the cattle on the thousand hills. I'm homeless. And I'm running for my life. I must have missed something. But then it got a little bit better, and they moved back to, eat, to move back to Israel, and she began to raise Jesus, her firstborn son. Now, we don't know if her other children came from Joseph or another man. We don't know, because like I said, Joseph's gone, disappeared. But she had other children. She had other children. Most famously, James wrote the book of James. But the Bible is very clear that when the kids were growing up, there was a huge division in the household. 
The other kids did not like Jesus at all. Are you a mom with a house that's divided? Mary knows your pain. Mary hears you. She feels your pain. She understands that. That is, I, I think sometimes when I talk to mothers, that sometimes is the worst. Is a house that's divided. Mary understood that. And yet she still had to be in love with Jesus and raise these other kids. That's grace. Mary had grace. Mothers, there's a grace given to you by Jesus I know nothing about because I'm not a mom. God has a special grace for mothers that's absolutely incredible. And I think mothering a divided house is grace I don't know about. And then Jesus starts going on to his missions. Now it maybe feels like for Mary, things are really happening. But he's not doing what she thinks he should do. And the culture, he's not doing what the Messiah should be doing. And he's doing some really weird things to the point where Mary thinks, and I'm sure she was convinced by her other children, Mom, Jesus is a nutcase. I know you think he's the Messiah, but he's a wacko. We've been telling you this all along. And she kind of bought into it. Because she shows up at a house in the New Testament and is like, ah, I think my son's got some mental issues. And then they stand outside the house and they're like, hey, can you tell Jesus that his mom and his brothers and sisters are out here? So the word gets into the house. And what does Jesus reply with? I have no brothers and sisters and mother other than these. Wow. It would have been completely, in my opinion, in her right to be like, you know what, God? Too high of a calling. Too crazy. I don't think it went the way you planned. I'm out. I'm out. Can you blame her? Would you blame Mary at that moment when Jesus denied her as his mother? Like, okay, that's enough. I, I'm, I'm out. I love the story that he read, that Jim read here in John. I can only imagine. This is 30 years. As a mother, do you ever wait patiently to see if this kid's actually going to be what you prayed for them to be? Let me say that again. As a mother, have you ever waited patiently as you pray, thinking this kid is not who I prayed for them to be? I'm waiting patiently. Mary understands you. She feels your pain. Because Mary was like, you say you're the Messiah, when are you going to do something? And you see it in what Jim read. They're at a wedding, and they run out of wine. That's so trivial in some regards. In some, if you're the owner of the house and the father of the bride, that's not trivial. In other words, it's trivial. And what I love about Mary is she pushes the Messiah. Only a mother can do that, by the way. I can see Jesus now being like, all right, everybody, only mom can push the Messiah. <laughs> but she did. I love it, because he says to her, hey, uh, that's not our problem. Mom, it's not my time. She doesn't say, oh, sweetie, it's okay, that's fine. You can maybe someday be who you say you're going to be. No, she turns around and in full faith, in full faith, goes, do what he says, and walks off. I can see Jesus being like, oh, Mom. <laughs> All right. Gab, Marlo. And then these awesome lines come out. That would be sweet. Anyway. But Mary has also experienced extreme grief. Just when Mary thought this was what it was, she had seen her son now heal the blind, heal the sick, heal the lame. She's now seen her son raise someone from the dead. We're getting somewhere. My prayers are being answered. My son is doing the ministry I always dreamed of him to do. And then it goes completely wrong. And the worst form of execution possible in that time, and really any time in the cultures of history, her baby boy is hung from a tree and insulted. And a crowd mocks and yells at him. One thing I learned in studying Mary as far as we know in Scripture, Mary is the only human present at the birth of the Messiah and the death of the Messiah. That gives me goosebumps. That's pretty incredible. 
You don't think you have a high calling, mom? A mom is the only one in history that was present at the birth of the Messiah and the death of the Messiah. If that's not a high calling in Scripture, I don't know what is. That's incredible to think about. Anyway, I hope you've enjoyed, Mom, in, in this, this, this look at Mary. I have to admit, as a Protestant, I haven't really studied Mary. And I think it's not okay that we as Protestants sometimes skip over her. What a beautiful story. I hope that you're encouraged because Mary, the mother of Messiah, the highest calling on earth, was not even close to a cakewalk. To recap, homelessness, refugee, made fun of, shame, guilt, uncomfortableness. She saw miracles. She saw joy, but she had major grief. She worked through a home, probably a single mom. It doesn't really show, but we don't know. Single mom. And not only that, a house that was divided. Children that hated each other. And this was a calling from God, the greatest calling of all time. So if you're discouraged, Mom, man, it's not going the way I thought. Man, it's not going the way I planned. Be encouraged by Mary's story. If you're experiencing a miracle and the wonders and joy, relate to Mary because she had the same thing. But if you're experiencing really lows and frustrations, experience to Mary, she had the same thing. Jesus, we thank you for mothers. We thank you for your mother, Jesus, Mary, and that we can learn so much from her. We thank you for her humble nature. We thank you for her strength, her kind heart, her leadership. God, we thank you for her faith even to push you into miracles. That was just incredible. Thank you for allowing her to do that. Thank you for our mothers. Thank you for mothers here online and present. Thank you for Mother's Day. God, uh, just like the resurrection, may we not just celebrate it one day of year with candy. May we not just celebrate Mother's Day one day a year with brunch and a phone call. But that we would be truly thankful for our mothers and their love and their sacrifice raising us. To me we pray. Amen. Amen. We're going to close with Amazing Grace.
being with us today. Thanks for gathering and worshiping the Lord. Now go in peace to love, serve, and enjoy him.